Hey everyone, so welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different, but also a highly requested video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys a tour of our backyard garden. I share about gardening and the things that I'm doing here and there through our family vlogs, but today I'm gonna to give a full tour of what we got going on. One, with this being our last garden here, I want to document it. I was already out here <laughs> getting dirty and planting some things and you know weeding and all of that stuff. It is just something that I truly enjoy doing. This is our fourth year or fifth year doing a good sized garden. And every year we have added something, have learned a lot. This year I didn't add anything because we knew that we were gonna be moving, but there was still enough time for me to plant some plants. And actually I had a ton of volunteer plants that happened, which was really cool to see. So I didn't pull anything out of the garden. I just kind of let it all do its thing and it worked out to my benefit. So it is weedy, it's messy, but it's also beautiful to me and I want to share it with you guys. So I'm going to start here at the front of the garden. So we just live in a neighborhood right now. We do have a half acre yard. We've got kids stuff everywhere, messes everywhere, but I've been able to have a good sized garden for the last couple years. I actually have eight good sized raised beds. Um, starting here at the front, this is my strawberry bed. So last year we actually had a friend that had ordered too many strawberry starts and what she could plant in time. So I got, I think, 50 strawberry plants from her. And Nathan built this for me. I think it was like in October. I was like, I have got to get these strawberry plants. So he built this for me. Um, our plan was to copycat it on this side, but with us moving, obviously we didn't end up doing that. So um, we have gotten a good amount of strawberries out of here, mostly as a snack. We haven't gotten a huge harvest. I am hoping that I will get some runners soon and I will propagate those and take them with us when we move. Um, I had a melon plant that I had started from seed that I needed a spot for. So I stuck it in there and so far it's starting to climb out. And I believe Reagan planted those okra seeds there. And the little kids like to plant seeds with me. So this is our big strawberry bed. I actually had a friend also give me onion starts and they did not do good here. They did better in another bed that I put them in, but I put a lot in here and for some reason, I don't know. So I'm, I've just left them in hopes maybe they'll still produce something, but I don't know why that happened. Um, and then over here, I actually just have these fabric containers that I bought, I think last year or the year before on Amazon and didn't end up using. And so I put some potatoes in here and those are doing really good. So I'm excited to see if we actually get potatoes. I need to add some more soil to that one. But we are getting our first flower there. That one just sprouted. I planted them. Actually, I didn't plant them the same time. I thought that I did. I did not. So I have used different things over the years, containers, I have like the raised beds, um, so I'll just show you all the different things that I have. I have a tomato plant in this fabric container as well. It did not do good after I transplanted it like at all. And I just left it and it's starting to come back and look so much better. This is a Cherokee purple tomato. So then walking through the beginning of the garden. So this was the entrance and then we added the strawberry bed, but over here, I like to use different things. And honestly, I find a lot of them off the side of the road. My neighbor was throwing away this old rocking chair and I picked it up. I mean, with it, you know, getting it for free, it doesn't matter it being outside. The bottom was broken, but I didn't care because I just wanted to put a pot in it with flowers anyways. And then I got these two pieces on our Tennessee vacation at an antique store. I just like to get older, rusty things that you don't care about getting messed up in the garden and use those as planters. So I've got a marigold there that volunteered in the garden. And then this thyme plant, it hasn't done a ton. I almost moved it this year, um, but I just decided to leave it. So, I mean, it's coming in okay. And then on this bed, we actually have a lot of volunteer zinnias. I didn't plant any zinnias this year. These are all coming up from just, you know, seeds that are blown from other plants that I had for previous years. Um, and then I've got this arch trellis here with green beans. And on this side, these are actually volunteer Scarlet Runner beans. I planted these last year and they didn't do anything. They were puny, little dinky things. I didn't do anything. And then they came back this year. And so far, I think that we're gonna get some beans because we've got a good bit of flowers coming in. And even if not, the flowers are just beautiful. So those are the beans on that side. And again, volunteer marigolds. Like plant marigolds one time, you will never have to purchase them again. Y'all will see what I'm talking about. They are everywhere. I've got them all in my pathways and I haven't pulled any of them this year because it just being our last year here, I just wanted things to kind of go wild. 
So then this side of the trellis, I planted Kentucky Wonder Beans. But y'all, I forget what I do and I end up double planting. Sometimes often, more so on the trellises. I have a cucumber plant here. So I think that will still do something. Um, the beans, we have gotten a lot off of this that we just eat fresh. I, I've got some that will be coming through again. We're getting some more flowers. I do have some that we need to pick. Honestly, the kids just come out here and eat them raw, which is obviously great for them. All right, so moving on in this bed, some more volunteer zinnias. This is a chamomile that has lived its life. It is done for the year. Chamomile likes a little bit cooler weather, but it smells so good. I did not end up harvesting anything off of it. I just used it as the flowers and just even the buds. They just smell so, they just smell fresh. It's really good. So this is a Cosmo that I planted as well. Um, I think you're supposed to pinch those off. I need to look that up, but I really love Cosmos. So I've got one there. I actually only end up with two Cosmos this year, but so now this is my pepper plant that overwintered. This is a Mad Hatter pepper plant. I actually have a small guy down here amongst some zinnias that have gotten eaten. Um, but this was here last year and it, it froze. We actually did get a freeze. You can see the twigs kind of in there, but I almost pulled it out y'all because I was like, oh, well, this is definitely dead. Peppers don't like cold weather. And I didn't, and I'm so glad that I didn't because look at this thing, it is just covered and peppers and they are so good. You can eat them green or they will ripen to red. They are good either way. And it is just covered in buds. Um, Logan really likes those peppers and Reagan. So they will just come out here and eat off the plant as well. A lot doesn't end up inside because we just eat it fresh outside. It's kind of funny. So then I put two tomato plants here. So I ended up buying some tomato starts once we knew that we were gonna be here long enough. And those, I'm glad that I did that because those are doing better than the ones that I started from seed. I don't remember what they are though. I know that they're a beefsteak variety. So I've got two tomato plants here that are doing really good. As you can see, we've got some tomatoes coming in and here and something got this one. So I don't spray anything. I mean, I will, I more do hand pick. Oh, that bean's climbing on the tomato. You can't climb on the tomato. Go back over there. But I will come out here and handpick insects and if I have to I'll do diatomaceous earth or spinosad stuff like that but I haven't done anything yet this year um so here I did have another tomato plant that just looked awful I'm pretty sure it had some sort of bacteria or fungus so I picked it out completely because I didn't want it to get the other plants but I got a pack of okra that had like nine starts in it in one pot so for three dollars I got nine okra plants and that was worth it to me if y'all don't grow okra or don't like okra, it's worth it just for the flowers. It's beautiful. So, got okra there. I've got a ton of volunteer basil in here too that I'm actually going to pot up so that I can take that with me. And if anything, just to have the seeds at our new property. So, I plan on doing that soon as well. So, this is an echinacea plant that I planted, I think it was last year. And honestly, I wonder if I could thin it out. I'm kind of curious. I need to look that up too but it was just kind of like, I think I planted it towards the end of last year. It was just a small plant and it has just taken off. As y'all can see, I love it. It is so pretty. Um, it's got all these buds that are coming up. I wonder if I can take that. If not, I know now Echinacea is easy to grow here, so I will definitely be doing that again. So this is a marigold that I just picked up from the flower bed that had volunteered and put it in a pot. So many plants, oh my goodness. Hopefully y'all enjoy gardening as much as I do. So then I have a second arch trellis. So I didn't show you, I'll show you the other side of that arch trellis in just a minute. So I like to put flowers in pots to just, you know, attract pollinators and stuff. So on this side, we have a lot going on. A lot volunteered in this bed and it is a lot of fun to me. So this I believe is an Everglade tomato that volunteered from just the ground. I've just left it and it's got all these either buds or tomatoes on it. Now it is getting pretty yellow. I've picked caterpillars off of it. So there's all these tomatoes too. So just kind of keeping an eye on it a little bit closer, but I just love that it's just hanging out and doing what it wants to do. So I did plant this sunflower, but I've had a lot of volunteer sunflowers too. So that will be really pretty whenever that opens up. Then we've got cucumbers on this side. Y'all know we like our cucumbers. <laughs> we still have to buy them. We can't grow enough. 
maybe one day I'll be able to. And this is a ground cherry that volunteered from last year as well. I had ground cherries over there. I had several pop up over here and I transplanted some, but I left this one because it just looked really healthy. So we've got cucumbers, ground cherries, marigolds, <laughs> another cucumber plant, marigolds everywhere. And then down here, we've got a tomato plant. This is one that I had bought um, once we found out that we were staying a little bit longer and I knew I could get some tomatoes off of it. So this is obviously a very weedy mess. I normally keep this maintained, but I obviously haven't. We've had a lot going on with moving. And I usually plant zinnias back here. All of this, not in the beds, <laughs> is volunteer zinnias and marigolds that I've just left. And they honestly are doing better than the ones that I planted last year. So we are just letting them be there and be beautiful and enjoying them. And actually I noticed this amongst the weeds. This is a butterfly weed. I will be pulling this up and potting that and taking that with me too. All right, so on this side of the trellis, obviously tons of marigolds. <laughs> I don't think I have to point out the marigolds anymore. Um, this is a Trumponzino zucchini, I believe is the name of it. It is the coolest plant and it gives the biggest squash and it grows, I call it the jungle vine because it just grows and takes off. So that I started from seed as well. More cucumbers in the midst. That's kind of doing puny. This one's doing better. And this is actually a volunteer ground cherry as well that came up over there. More marigolds. <laughs> And then this is a melon too that I started from seed. So I had onions in here and this is where they did better. We've already harvested them and they are inside. So I planted the okra in here that I split off from that container I was telling you all about. Another volunteer ground cherry. This is one that I transplanted. So in here is a tomato plant living amongst the tall marigolds. And then I had bush beans here that we that were done. So I pulled those out and put the, more of the okra from the container that I got. So that is this bed. Okay, so I'm back to the bed that has the Everglade tomatoes that volunteered. So we've just got more tomatoes that are doing really good. We are having some caterpillars show up. So I'm having to come out here every day and check and hand pick. I might actually spray tonight just to be on the safe side in case I missed anything. But we've got one, two, that one, it looks like two, but it's one plant. Three tomato plants. This one is not doing very good. I'm contemplating pulling it out, but I don't know. Not 100% sure yet. So I've got another tomato plant. I've got some more onions that are down here that are on the smaller side. Um, and of course the marigolds are everywhere here as well. <laughs> All right, so this is the other side of the Scarlet Runner bean trellis. I've got tomato plants, another tomato plant, tomato and tomato. I don't remember what these are. I had labels, but I don't know what happened to them. Now, this one is a Brad's Crazy Cherry, I believe, that is coming in. I'll know, I think, once I see the tomatoes. The volunteer zinnias. So I've got a pepper plant hiding down there. Another pepper, so I got peppers in the middle and tomatoes on the outside. And then this is actually a pineapple top that we cut off. We have another one and another flower bed that we put in. Um, and so this pineapple top, I actually cut off of the pineapple and Harper said, oh, I want to plant it. And so this was last year. And I said, okay, go plant it outside. And this is where she put it. So that's where it stayed. So for a couple years, I planted zinnias in pallets. I did not replant those this year. So these are volunteer, obviously a lot of grass. I've used a pool as well. That did great for a number of years. I actually was gonna clean that out and be done with it this year because I wanted to fill this wood piece that I got off the side of the road with flowers. Um, obviously I didn't get around to it, but this is an old bench that I had that's fallen apart. And then I was like, you know what? This will fit perfectly in the bench. That would be pretty with flowers but I didn't get around to it. Here's a hibiscus plant that's coming back too. That we, like I said, we got a good freeze, so it killed off a lot, but things are coming back still. Okay, so again, Cindy is in the walkway. So then this bed, I actually put a Cosmo in this pot. 
and we've got sunflowers, sunflowers. I've got a cucumber here. That's looking kind of sad. Actually, this whole bed is cucumbers. Cucumbers. We're having a pollination issue, so I'm going to try to hand pollinate the next batch that I see, but I could definitely pick that. More cucumbers. My neighbor's dog saw me. <laughs> and I think these are green onions. I honestly don't remember. I planted those last year. Cucumbers. Volunteer zinnia is coming in. Sunflower. I planted an okra plant here from that container too. A cucumber that's not doing so good. Another cucumber plant that's not doing so good. I've had tons of volunteer basil. So I got all the small pieces and planted them in there as well. Lots of weeds. Then I actually had more volunteer tomato plants that popped up recently. So I moved them to the center of the bed. So hopefully those will continue to do well. Look at these zinnias. They have just come in so good and just so pretty. So this side of the garden, I usually actually have green beans here and green beans in this bed. I didn't do anything this year. Anything that's growing just volunteered. I've actually got a ton of volunteer sunflowers that are coming in and basil that I, I don't know that I'll need to get the basil, but I can come and harvest more basil if I want. But it is obviously, I haven't done anything over here. I've also got some okra that's growing amongst the weeds as well. I usually do green beans there, and this is usually a big sunflower bed. But again, with us moving, I didn't do anything, and that's just what's happened. <laughs> okay, so this is another front raised bed that we have. In this pot, I had strawberry plant. We've gotten a lot of strawberries off of this one, actually, but it recently started looking really bad. So I'm guessing it's just done. I need to get in here. I haven't fed this one, I don't think. But we also have some zinnias popping up too. So at the front here, I've got some sunflowers. I planted lavender. Every I've, I love lavender. And I've tried planting it many times and it always dies. And this year it actually stayed alive. <laughs> now I think it likes the cooler weather, so it's probably dying back now. But I was super excited to at least succeed at lavender for once. <laughs> So this is a huge green bean trellis. We have gotten tons of green beans off of this. It's actually climbing up on my windmill over here. We've got some more flowers coming up, so we should have some more beans soon. It's starting to weigh down that trellis, but it is a lot of fun to come out here and get some beans. So more tomatoes. I think this is a Kellogg's tomato. I've got a thyme plant down here. So something else that I've been doing this year is direct composting and putting any scraps that we have straight in the garden. And I think it's helped. I've done that a lot over here. I, I didn't point it out, but there's eggshells and stuff like that. So I've done it with peppers and cucumbers and strawberries mainly, just kind of throwing them directly on the garden. So two more cucumber plants. This one is doing better. We've got some cucumbers coming in here. Not sure what's up with this guy. Oh, there's a little cucumber. I didn't even know that that was there. Hello. So this is was going to be a strawberry bed. I had dill in here. So this is where that massive dill plant was that I have shared before. And I harvested most of it, but I left this because it still had flowers on it and just to help attract the pollinators. Um, but it obviously is done and has gone to seed. So I can take that out. <laughs> Whoever moves in here next year is going to have so much volunteer dill and cilantro. It's not going to be funny. <laughs> Hope they appreciate it. So I stuck one of those okra starts there. Got a thyme plant there. So I had planted strawberries in here. And I was hoping to overtake this bed with strawberries. Like once it produced runners and stuff like that. But... Obviously, this is what has been left. So that's how come I haven't planted a ton in here. Like I said, I'm supposed I'm hoping to get some strawberry runners that I can take with us. And for whatever reason, whatever we have done in the beds, we always put a thick layer of cardboard or weed blocker. I can't keep the grass out. So I just come out here and weed it, you know, as I have the time. But anyways, we can't can't keep it out. I need to get this out, but this dill plant was massive and I had a huge cilantro plant there too. So this is the forgotten area as well. So that's just an old kale plant. I kind of wanted to see what happened. I've got marigolds, weeds, old onions. I said marigolds, morning glories. Um, haven't done a thing. Obviously it looks like it, but 
This used to be really pretty. I like having old windows out in the garden too. This was my sitting area, my uh, real table that I got. But anyways, that is what is left of it. So this was my original strawberry bed. I had planted these strawberries from seed and they have done really good. I'm wondering if I can actually thin them out. They're a different variety. They're small little tiny strawberry uh, berries, which is really fun. Um, so these are part of that set that I got from the friend and those have produced really well. It's strawberries like sun, but they've almost seemed to do better in the shade. So anyways, another pallet bed that we had that volunteer zinnias again, I you know, normally planted them, but I didn't do it this year. And this is just what it looked like. Um, here is an oregano plant too. It's not doing the greatest, but I had actually planted it in the ground. Oh my goodness, it smells good. And a friend told me, um, you need to move that because oregano will take over. So I just stuck it in a pot. And so I don't plan on ever planting it anywhere except for a pot because I don't want oregano to take over. And then there's my weeds. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> More strawberry plants. These haven't done as hot either. Um, but, you know, just keep on trying. Oh, it is getting hot. <laughs> I've got to get inside. It's getting to the heat of the day. So I'm going to show you kind of the containers that I did earlier and the green stock now. So when we first found out that we had to move, we thought that we were going to have to do it by June. Um, so I put everything that I had already started in pots. Then we found out that we had more time. I got some tomato starts and cucumber starts. Actually, Nathan surprised me with them and planted those in the raised bed. So I'm going to show you what is happening here. I do have other, I mean, a lot more flower beds and stuff that we have done, but I haven't maintained them this year because we've had so much going on. We have blueberry plants that we planted last year. I am hoping to take them with us. I don't know that they will survive. So part of me just kind of wants to leave them so that they live, ensure that they live. I don't know. We'll see what we do. So here's all the tomato starts that I did and put in fabric pots. They are doing okay. Like this is where I've gotten the cherry tomatoes so far. Some have looked really sad. I don't know. Well, actually, I see the roots there now. I have fed them. I have top dressed them. So I don't know if what's going on. Um, but some, like, they're still producing. So these, goodness, why can't I think of the name of this one right now? Oh, that's the Berry's Crazy Cherry. The other one, oh, goodness, I can't remember. But so we've got several different, I've got Sun Sugar. I think, and mortgage lifter are the tomatoes that are here. One of the tomatoes looked really sick. So I pulled that and put an okra plant down there. And here is the green stock. I told y'all that I would update on the green stock. I absolutely love it. It has done really good. I've got the petunias. I might've planted too much, but I had bought a big pack. And again, we thought that we were moving sooner. So I just put them all in here. I had gotten some herb plants. There's some chives and I didn't realize that there was a cucumber plant in there whenever I planted the chives because the cucumber was a seed. <laughs> so this is where we've gotten a lot of our cherry tomatoes so far. Now I do need the trellis thing that green stock offers as well. Um, but I have not gotten that. So, and definitely need to plant determinate tomatoes in the green stock, but it has done really good with the herbs. I've got basil. Where's the basil? Okay, so I just spun it. So I have it on the spinning base. So I have gotten a lot of basil off of here. I actually only have two basil plants there. And then these were volunteer basils that came up in the yard that I transplanted over here. So I am loving, and I just did that like a week ago and they already are looking really good. So I'm loving the green stock. I do have a code in the description box below that you can see and get, and they have different sales and promotions almost every month. So check that out in the description box below, but I am loving it. They don't mind the weeds. <laughs> okay. But look at all these blueberries that are coming in. The kids have eaten all of them just fresh off the plant. So these won't last, like give us buckets or anything like that because the kids will just eat them. But it has been fun having blueberries this year. It is getting rather warm out here. So that's our vegetable garden. It's weedy, it's messy. We've got stuff everywhere, but it is just in its glory right now. And I just love coming out here and working in the garden. 
and I've had many requests from you guys asking to share more about it. I'm actually in what we used to call our fairy garden. So we have dabbled in many things over the years, used different containers, different methods. It's just fun to experiment. I really just like trying different things. So thanks for hanging out with me, seeing our garden. We'll see y'all in the next video.